live in a society where everything is about money, but people are extremely bad in managing their money or saving or investing it. So I thought that as an entrepreneur, I should start solving that problem. I think um, having to be in insurtech space is not just about technology innovation, it's also about business model innovation. Okay, I mean, about, if you speak about fintech, I mean, honestly, it's not about tech, it's not about fin or about finance. It's a mindset change, okay? I think Southeast Asia is a unique place where, or not even Southeast, Asia, India, China, included Japan, well, not Japan actually, more India, China. There are a lot of people who are not banked. There are a lot of people who don't have bank accounts, they don't have payments uh, solutions, they don't have credit cards, nothing. So there is a big gap, I think, still in India, in China, in Southeast Asia, to do a lot of fintech because, because that is one area where there's a big, big need for credit, for example, to, to get loans better, to uh, you know, get bank accounts. Um, I think the, the, the biggest difference between uh, fintech companies between US, Europe and Asia is that Asia is a bit behind in technology or its APIs. Banks don't want to open up their APIs, they don't want to startups to scrape data, to get passwords to uh, users' bank accounts, so it's restricted yet. If we compare, if we compare that back to UK or USA, the markets are more mature, and the markets are used to, let's say, digital onboarding, KYC. You don't need the wet signature anymore. You can get the people's data from the bank accounts, analyze that, give them, give them back recommendations. So Asia, most, most, it is more conservative on that side, and slowly we're seeing a shift that they're becoming more flexible. If you speak about fintech in Southeast Asia. It's a bit different than in Europe or in the US because most of the Southeast Asian people they are pretty shy so they're not used to sell, they're also not used to pitch so it depends on which country you are if you're in a particular Southeast Asian country they're really not used to sell you something so they're very very shy and in Southeast Asia it's kind of they don't want to lose face okay so this means that the people here are not that aggressive than, for example, the people in the US or in or other European countries. So the important thing in Asia is entrepreneurs need to learn how to execute, given that there generally isn't much innovation in the first place. If you can execute well, you understand your local nuances, and uh, you you develop your and you de develop your solution catering to the local markets. Even though it's a copycat business model, it can still work uh, pretty well here. Right. Very occasionally, you will get some very original ideas coming out from Asia, but that's a, that's a rarity and definitely not the norm here. Singapore, it is like a Switzerland of Asia. So you have a lot of money here. People are well experienced in the money management industry, financial industry. So for startups to come here and start innovating, or come up with new ideas, it's a perfect place. The Singapore's ecosystem is really supportive. Six months ago, or eight months ago when I moved to Singapore, there were not that much talk about fintechs or the whole startup ecosystem. So with eight months, we've seen a lot of development by MAS, the banking industry. So the whole government is really supporting the whole startup ecosystem. So I would say Singapore is a really uh, ideal place for a startup to come and start developing their fintech company. Definitely Hong Kong is one of the places where you can do the same. Uh, but I would say Singapore might be more competitive, so they try to be out there as the leader in the fintech space in the world. So as a startup, it's, it's a great place to be and, and feel the support from the government to actually develop your idea. The fintech uh, startup ecosystem is probably the most developed in Southeast Asia right now. Right? And uh, that's also true for the startup ecosystem in general. Right. Singapore uh, on its own is already a very developed and sophisticated uh, financial hub. Right. So it makes sense that startups that want to do fintech solutions come to Singapore and network, have a chance to work with the banks and financial institutions that are already here. So, um, so far we've seen a surge uh, in the interest of, in, especially in this sector, Asia I see that there's great potential to power the next wave of global insurance innovation. So startups are enhancing like the whole existing insurance infrastructure. 
uh, we have also seen others that aim to disrupt by giving like alternative digital insurance uh, risk transfer. Um, at the same time, we've seen existing insurance firms defending by coming up with new innovation lab. Uh, so, so far we've seen about eight in Singapore. Singapore is uh, a great place for a fintech startup, uh, very much so because the MAS is, in, is very much encouraging towards innovation and, and uh, continued uh, change yeah, in the fintech space. Uh, and I think the regulatory environment here as well as the, um, the sophistication and the maturity of the financial system uh, also plays a huge part. Uh, in building up a, a great ecosystem for fintech startups. Um, actually, I would say Singapore um, become now even the leader in fintech in the world, and uh, of course also in Southeast Asia. So they did really a lot. Actually, with Singapore is, is pretty uh, funny. Like one year ago, I would say um, there was not much here. So um, I'm Swiss, and one year ago, I would say Singapore was even behind Switzerland. And actually, Switzerland is behind everything. So if Singapore is behind Switzerland, there is there is there is something wrong. But actually, since one year, so much stuff is going on. Singapore is now much much stronger in the ecosystem, and I would say um, Singapore is now one of the of the strongest ecosystem in Southeast Asia or even the world. Uh, Singapore is definitely behind the curve compared to other ecosystems like China, which is the leading fintech ecosystem in Asia at the moment. A lot of the new solutions we see from the West are already being tried out in China. I think for Singapore-wise, our government has been really supportive. We have EDB, Infocom Investment Spring, that do a lot of um, work to actually attract startups coming to Singapore by giving out grants, tech incentives, co-investment, as well as holding conferences. Like our MAS has been actively promoting Singapore to the fintech, to be the fintech hub, organizing fintech challenges and festivals in the upcoming um, November. Singapore looks a lot to the United Kingdom. You know, as I, I strongly believe the UK is the number one fintech capital in the world. Of course, you have New York, you know, Silicon Valley, after that. Uh, once you, you move beyond these ecosystems though, I would say most other ecosystems are at a similar phase of development. You know, China, that definitely very sophisticated, but is uh, largely contained to the Chinese market only. Right? Um, everywhere else is still starting to grow their own ecosystem and that's where I believe Singapore can uh, provide some value. If we look at the whole world, everything starts from US. All the big innovations in fintech, they mostly come from US. Then they move to Europe. Is it Silicon Valley, New York or London? Big cities. But as well, Italy is really big on fintech and they probably have the most well-known robo-advisor in Europe who just moved to UK as well. And now we're starting to see Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, China is big as well on FinTech, but the rest of the world don't really know about it, but they're really advanced in technology and the, and the way they develop it. And as well, Japan. So I think there's like a race going on right now in each and every country who can innovate faster and bring a change through FinTech companies. So it's really hard to single out which city is the best, but as it said, Singapore is like the Switzerland of Asia, so for a fintech, uh, fintech startup to be here, I think it's, uh, it's a really good move because it validates your idea. So once you validate it in Singapore, it's much easier for you to move to other countries in the region or even go back to Europe, for example. I mean, the, the most problem is they need to make money. <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> this is the first problem, um, if you can see that, and we all know that, and I say this uh, pretty much straightforward, 95% of them will not survive. Okay, why will they not survive? Okay, A, they probably they don't have a business plan, and they don't, they, they don't want to go B2B. Most of them, they go B2C, okay? They don't understand that B2C is too tricky to get a customer. So they need to think B2B. If they get like one online banking as a customer, instead of like thousands uh, single customer, they have from one, from one uh, point to the other, they have a lot of new touch points. So they need to think B2B. The other point is where they're pretty weak, as I said, is in selling. And the third point is 
they don't have really a clear marketing strategy. I don't see that the power of, for example, content marketing or smart marketing is yet in, in uh, fintechs. And the last point is really, really, really important. Most of these fintech startups here, they don't have an understanding of compliance and legal points. And this you really need to understand to be successful in a fintech startups. I think for both uh, fintech and insurtech, um, we get I guess that we face similar challenges like going to the market. Having a great technology isn't simply enough because a good marketing strategy is really crucial to drive business. Um, gaining customer trust uh, has been proven to be quite a challenging obstacle uh, because for fintech companies, uh, we have to move beyond just the early adopters with like finance often being quite intimidating complex and also very personal subject to many individuals. Winning the trust of the customers, um, is, it doesn't happen just overnight. So the main number one challenges will always be uh, regulations, right? I mean, re regulations have the power to help fintech, but they also have the power to destroy all fintechs and protect the in incumbents. So you really need a re regulator that's a, a bit more progressive in thinking and not one that's uh, you know, out to protect the, self, the interests of the existing players in the financial institutions. I think the main challenges for fintech in Asia uh, is, is the fact that you have many countries around you with different regulations, uh, different sort of rules, uh, and uh, it may not be as clear uh, cut uh, in terms of doing cross-border transactions, for example. Uh, so I think that's a challenge for fintech companies in Asia. Uh, in Singapore, uh, I think the challenge would be in terms of getting uh, uh, talent, hiring of talent. I think that's, that's always going to be a, a challenge to get good, good uh, access to resources and talent. In general, I think finance in, in Asia needs help. Um, the, there's a lot of, too many people are unbanked. There's too many people who don't have bank accounts. They have no credit. They, have, they couldn't get a credit card. They couldn't get, get a loan if they wanted to. Uh, they can't save money. There's very, unless they put it beneath their mattress, right? So it's very difficult, I think, in terms of finance for people in Asia. I think developed markets like Japan and Singapore have less of a problem than countries like Malaysia or Indonesia or India, for example. Um, but I think that fintech, it will be big in the next five years. It'll get even bigger than it is now. But I think that the incumbent banks and the incumbent institutions need to get their act together to work with fintech startups. Fintech is, is a mindset change. And as I learned in, in my career, you cannot change the mind of the people or the bankers, okay? What can they do now as, as a bank? They can transform like a new knowledge or new thinking and then by buying startups or by bringing startup guys into the banks. And this is probably what I see is would be the role of fintechs. They really show the, the banks in, in which way um, they can work more efficient, they can work more digital and they can get the people in, in a much better way. And in the end, it's not about competing with this bank, it's about bringing the knowledge from outside in, inside the bank. I think um, collaboration is very important. Or uh, you can say it like co-innovation together with uh, financial institution as it's really important to merge both like the startups innovative technology together with the big players. Um, I, I believe that strategic partnerships will really help to um, bring up the, like the startups to the, to the mass as uh, we can actually experience pilot solutions and it helps to actually increase um, the creativity from the corporate side as well. Currently, what, what we saw in Singapore was that the government really supported innovation uh, and gave out a lot of money to banks to start innovating. Now almost every single bank in, in Singapore, they have their own innovation labs. They bring in startups uh, that they want to work closely with. But still, it is a business environment. So for a bank to uh, work with a startup who might be a potential threat to them, I would think from the competitive view, it's not like we like your idea. 
just do it out there. So definitely because it's a business and banks are competitive, then there will be mismatches. Uh, but most likely, I would say at one point, banks have to work with fintech companies because you have so many of them. And I think I would encourage banks to be more open uh, to as well to start talk to startup and maybe kind of take the step further down and invest into future. Singapore, at least, I would say the banks are doing a good job in terms of they are engaging with startups and they are trying to work with them. Um, for example, our accelerator startup bootcamp has has a big bank on board. Uh, just next door, FinLab has another big bank on board, Chinese bank. So, yeah, the banks are doing a good job here. But but what I would say is that the banks need to think a little more long term. Like they, they they shouldn't try and white label everything for themselves. They should think a little more long term of how they can support rather than buy them out. Currently, it's all about work for me. I think what they need to do is work for our customers, not work for me. And I think the banks are have that mentality currently here. And I think that's global. That, that's not a Singapore specific problem. It's a global problem where the bank or the incumbents want startups to work for them rather than working in the best interests of their, their own customers. So I think that while banks are doing, doing a great job right now, they could do a lot better. I do see that you know, fintech will be, become more pervasive. As it becomes more pervasive, the trust level in fintech will get higher. And that will just help you know, more fintech uh, startups to gain more traction with the end users they are serving. So I think for fintech startups, it will help to reduce the cost and improve the quality of financial services. For insurtech, most likely will enable a new way of assessing risk, as we believe that um, on-demand insurance will actually help the um, help the new generation to come up with the instant gratification of getting. Um, insurance policies from mobile um, rather than just the annual coverage. Um, it's pretty hard to say. I mean, everybody speaks about disruption. I don't think it's about disruption. There are not many disruptive business models. So in five years, as I said before, I would say not many startups which we have now here will survive. But the successful ones, they would collaborate with other ones, okay? And if you speak about FinTech in Southeast Asia, most of the startups, they don't get the power of collaboration, okay? So it's very, very important for a startup that they understand how to collaborate and with who they should work together. And mostly, honestly, there's either the insurance companies, the banks, they should work together. I think the, the innovation, what we're going to see is probably the way we analyze people's spending to make them better savers, make them understand more about money, uh, take the fees down, remittance for example, that people don't lose a lot to fees. So I think we're gonna see a lot more transparency come back to, and the old fee structures that we currently have in the industry, they will start coming down. So I don't think we're going to see something really, really innovative, because we already have Alipay, probably they're gonna implement that in US, in UK, so, but I think the main thing that is going to happen is transparency and the fees will get lower and people tend to start to get smarter about it as well. But I think the overall theme uh, around these trends is the, uh, the continued innovation of the financial services space, uh, making it better and, and adding more value uh, and making it easier for customers to access uh, financial products. Mm -hmm.